Good morning, Jim Hodges here, Oreo here. Oreo is a cross between Anatolian Shepherd and Great Pyrenees. She's almost seven months of age. You see how big she is now. It's really good that they brought her in to me when she did at her size because she is showing signs of dominance. Dominance doesn't necessarily mean aggression or anything like that, but it can mean that, and it can mean that I'm controlling the pack. Who's the pack? Hopefully it's everybody, all the humans in your family and everything else that's alive and living in your family or extended family, okay? We want to be her leader. We want to start becoming her leader now so that it's easier to maintain that as she gets older. And we do that primarily through obedience and by making sure that we praise her when she's doing what we want and be ready to provide a consequence without intimidating, dominating, breaking her spirit when she doesn't do what we want. The good thing about uh, behaviors is that if she does it once, she's going to do it over and over again. If you like it, put a word to it. You got a new trick and you want to praise her. If, she, if you don't like it, you got to be ready to consequence. And you consequence as a leader. And as you guys know by now, I believe the best way to show a dog that we're the leader is there's subliminal things, but a lot of it's through obedience. And why? Because we can, in the moment, tell her what she's doing right or wrong with obedience if we're sound. Okay, so she's got a little bit of a dominant behavior. She also has shown that she's a little bit timid around uh, animals that are as big as her or bigger. I, my dogs, other dogs we've seen, horses, ponies, what have you. She hasn't really shown that for smaller animals, my cats and our little Yorkie that's in the house. So when I say she gets a little worried, if the dogs approach her on an even keel, we're fine. But if they're running around and, and being crazy, it scares her. Our job is, is to try to introduce her to as many big dogs as we can. That doesn't mean they have to smell, but she needs to be around them. She needs to be around them controlled. And ideally, with obedience, you need to try to make sure you're in between her and the other dogs for the longest time, okay? Dogs go through two fear imprint stages. She's just come out of one. The, the next one's coming any time. We want to sort of cushion that out if we can. So we're gonna go through obedience. I'm gonna show you what we're doing, okay? If she does something wrong, I'm gonna bite it. I'm gonna to try to praise her. She does love treats. I'm gonna use treats, especially for the come command. And uh, with you at home, if you wanna give your dogs treats all the time, I could care less. I typically give treats to teach my dogs, especially if they're motivated with treats, because motivation for praise is a combination of words, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion, all in that moment of time. I'm gonna praise her, but I'm gonna back off of it. For me, personally, with my dogs, I still, my dogs still get treats, but I'm never gonna use it as a tease or a lure. I got a treat in my hand. When I'm teaching a command, it's gonna be a result of her doing what I ask her to do, okay? Then I'm gonna give her that words, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion. So, you ready, sweetheart? Now, you heard emotion. We want to encourage on our obedience, okay? That's so important. We're trying to make a connection with our emotions from here to here. Because I have found if we become the leader and we embody that emotion as well, man, she's gonna listen to us most all the time if we're worthy of it. How are we worthy? By practicing and by being. You ready, sweetheart? Let's go. That a girl, good girl. So let's go with our walking command. Her job is to walk with me, right beside me on a uh, leash. Let's go, good girl. It's being right here. I don't want her out here, out here, or way behind, okay? I typically want her here. If she starts to move away from me, I'm gonna tap that leash, good girl, and tell her no when I tap it, back to my side. And it's a tap. It is not pulling the leash, because we're doing the work for her. We tap to show her. So we would say, no, let's go. And then as soon as she did it, we'd come back with light praise. Not as much as if she did it right the first time, but praise just the same. You ready? Let's go. Good girl. So we walk in the beginning, I'll change directions. You see how she's watching me right now? Good girl. I want to let her know she's being good and that I'm real happy with what she's doing. Good. Sit. Hand signal for sit. Good girl. When our dogs obey us, we want to praise them right off. Words, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion. Some combination of those if we can. When I ask her to sit, she has to hold that sit until I release her. 
If she did not sit then or she popped up, I would go, no, sit, and then pray skin lightly if she does what we ask, okay? She's really good at it. So now what I'm going to do is release her. Break. I break her. Do you see how I stepped away? Did you hear my emotion? Good girl. I told her, break. And then my hands come right here. Why do my hands come right there? Because I want her to be centered on me. I want to be the center of the universe, if you will. I'm also starting to teach the off-leash and on-leash come or recall command, okay? That's why we have it here. So when she's running around, just say she's running around. We've done this in our home, not in our yard free, but uh, in our home. When she's running around in the house, I will go, hey, baby, look what I got. Come. Good. Notice when I told her to come, break. When I told, no, now she dropped it on the ground. Typically, I don't let them pick stuff off, off the ground, so I put that back in my pocket. But that off leash, I got her attention with a toy or a treat, my positive emotion, and if she decided she was gonna come to me, that's when I told her to come, when she committed to come. If she saw something else and didn't wanna come, I'm not gonna say a word. Why? Because I don't wanna ask her to do something and she disobey. I want her to be so connected to that recall command that she does it all the time. Let's go, sit. On leash is basically the same thing, except now I have her on leash. So if I asked her to come and she didn't do it, I would tap the leash straight to me. Watch what I do. Come. She comes, she sits, looks at me in the eye. Ah, a girl, good girl, break. Okay, so you see that the come and the break's not a lot different, uh, but it is. It is teaching her, one, that she's free to do what she wants. In the beginning, we want to be the center of the universe. The come command is to teach her to come whenever we need her. And we have to practice that a good bit of the time, okay? Let's go. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Remember, she holds that sit. Now, down. Good girl. I asked her to down hand signal like this was a SIT. Here is down from in front down from the side if she's right here beside me. When I ask her to down, she has to down. If she doesn't down, this is her head, no, down. And then good girl when she does it, okay? If she does do it, we're good. She downs, we're gonna praise her. We can come in and give her a treat, praise her, uh, pet her, love her, do whatever we want. Now if we came in to praise her and she popped up, we would have to bite her back down because she has to hold that down till we release her, okay? All right, sit. Good girl. So I asked her to sit. That was the hand signal. I wanted to get that in since I was trying to show you what to do, okay? If she didn't sit then, again, tap straight up in the sit. No, sit. Break. Every time we tell our dogs no, uh, especially the first few months, we need to have some sort of physical touch with that, okay? We're bringing meaning back to no. Because so many of us tell our dogs to know to begin with when they come in, or our puppies, when they come into our home. And before long, because there's no physical action with it, okay, it goes in one ear and out the other. We're trying to introduce our words so that they'll be powerful again later. So we tell her no, we got to bite her. Bite with the leash, bite with our side, bite with our snout, bite with our scruff, okay? All of those are no's. And just remember, when we do no, after we come out of the no, if she's settled and doing what we want, we're gonna provide like praise. Let's go. So now we have, well, let's go back here. Sit. Good. Down. Down from the side, the same as down in front. Here's the hand signal. Sit. Good. Let's go. Next come in, and I'm going to give her a treat for this. You'll see how much she really enjoys this. It's the P-L-A-C-E command. You ready, baby? Okay, baby. Play. And our girl, she comes in and gets on the bed. Good. Good girl. So I gave her the treat. I touched and loved her at the same time. You know, she got on the bed. Her job when she gets on the bed is to lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. Uh, I don't care what. Good girl. What she does as long as she gets on the bed and stays there. She can easily do this a couple of hours at a time. With a big dog like this, you gotta make sure your bed's big enough so she doesn't roll off of it too easily. But other than that, she's there. She can have a bone, a toy to chew with, or what have you. Her job is to be there. What you're getting out of this is getting a chance to show her you're the leader, 
but you guys are all relaxing at the same time. When we first started this, she did not like the place command at all. She was all rigid and sat there and actually panted a little bit, but I think that was part of her uh, dominant behavior that uh, she really didn't like the idea of someone controlling her like what we were doing, okay? Really important. That's gonna happen when she goes back home. In fact, I tell all my clients, when your dog goes back home from working here, they're gonna go right back to doing what they used to do until you show them that you've changed. That's why it's my job to teach, your job to do, okay? And that's the case in 95, 98% of the time. What is the small percentage of the time? when we have situations that she's afraid of something or maybe she's not sound. She seems to be sound, but I'm just saying, there are exceptions and then when those exceptions happen, that just causes us to have to buckle down and work a little bit harder, okay? So she can easily do this a couple of hours at a time. If she got off the bed or didn't go on the bed, I would have gone just like this, I would have gone no, no, place. And my hand signal for the bed is just like this, okay? See, she's relaxed herself really well. She's really a sweet girl, okay? Okay, baby, let's go. So you notice I didn't break her that time. What did I do? I told her to let's go. You know, the one thing about all these obedience commands is you can use whatever obedience command you want next. She's not stuck to doing one certain thing. It's only by your imagination or your want to itiveness what you're going to do from one command to the next. If she messes up, that means she's not sure of it. We take the time to come back and teach. And when we teach, when she does something wrong or you do something wrong, I always like to come back and do it at least two times correctly before I move on. And having said that, when we are working with her, it's always good with any dog, we always finish on a positive note, okay? Let her last thought of us working together is, man, I could like to do that again, okay? So that's again, words, touch, treat, toy, positive emotion, any of those, all of those, okay? Let's go. Okay, so we talked about a lot of the commands right now. Uh, one of the commands that I like to teach is the load up command. I don't think she's gonna be on furniture, but she's gonna be loading up in a vehicle or having to climb up on something in the future. We do that as the load up. This again, I guess because she was uh, a little bit uncertain about what to do, she was a little shy with it to begin with. This is a real hard place to load up, but she, because as big as she is, but she's done real well. Now, listen to how I encourage, and we go from there. I'm a point, just like with the place command. Okay, baby, load up. And a girl, break. Good girl, you did that really good. I'm proud of you. So if she would have gone over it and went right off, I wouldn't have gotten mad. I would have just turned right back around with her and did it again. How many times? I'd want to get at least two in a row where it would work, okay? We want to, we're not looking to consequence. We're looking to praise. Consequence is just something we have to do. And when we do provide a bite, it's not designed to intimidate, dominate, break her spirit, hurt her or have her fear us, okay? It's about learning. And then we always come in after the consequence and do what? Like praise when she gets what we want, okay? Let's go, let's go. So uh, one thing that we might wanna do, down, good girl, stay. Now the stay command is pack your bags, you're gonna be there for a while. When I ask my dog to sit or down normally, I don't say stay. I only tell them to stay when I don't want them to have to pay attention to me, okay? So when I told her stay, now she could lay on her side, she could go to sleep, she could chew a bone, she could actually smell the ground as long as she doesn't start ripping up a piece of carpet or picking up a rock or what have you. She is learning to pack her back, good girl, that she's gonna be there a while, okay? Once we have this down, stay down, then the next thing I wanna do is use that actual stay command going from one room to another. We're going out of room, we say, hey baby, stay and we walk out the room, good girl. Now she started to come through the door, I'm watching, it's a bird or squirrel or something back there, I hear it in the back ear. If she started to come through the door, I would get her, no, 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 stay, and then I'd walk back through again. And gradually I'd get to the point where I could go wherever I wanted to in the house. Play, stay, what have you, break. And now she can come through. The last command we have is the heel command. 
the heel command is like a tight let's go, okay? Uh, I'm gonna ask her to be right here again. I call it, a, instead of a little circle like I did earlier, I call it like a rectangular box. And her job is to stay in the box. My job is to help her stay in the box. And what do you mean by me help her stay in the box? Well, when I'm making all these turns, she doesn't know what we're doing. She has to react to me. So when I tell her to heal, and then all of a sudden I turn like this, I've got to give her a chance to get back into the box before I would provide a consequence. The hand signal is like this, so here we go. Heal. Good. See how I'm turning? I stop. Ah, no. Sit. Good girl. So she messed up. No. Sit. I'll do it again. Heal. Turn around. I step off. She comes in. I've got to give her a chance to get back in the box. Good girl. So, you saw that she had a little bit of a mind fade there. That's okay. There's only one perfect being to ever walk this earth, okay? We're gonna make mistakes. What we do is continue to work on them, okay? And try to get better and better. Heal. So we go again, we stop, she sits. And when she sits, she has to hold that sit until I release her. I can release her by going into a heel. I can release her by, let's go. Back to a let's go, I could have done a down. I could have done any number of things. I think that pretty much covers the obedience here. The biggest thing is, is we want to try to socialize her the things that might bother her. Any dog, if you see something that, that worries them and you've gotten leadership and you've got that black and white obedience, the best way to start to teach them that it's okay is for, first of all, for you to be okay. Second of all, you've got to be the, okay, meaning confident and not show the fear that she may be showing. Second thing is have the obedience. And then last thing is to gradually introduce her to that new thing. That doesn't mean get up in their face. That means start as a distance, let her see she's comfortable, and then gradually move up and get closer with you trying to be in between her and whatever the object is. She's trusting us. We're her protector, we're her leader, okay? And then she's gonna do the same for us. Biggest thing is when you've got these dogs that have energy or, or used to roaming farms, they need exercise. You've gotta give them that exercise. Sprinkle in obedience when you go for a walk, if you want or if you don't, okay? But it's important to keep her engaged both mentally and physically as much as you can, especially in the first couple of years of life so she knows who we are at all times. Because she's gonna get older and she's gonna test. If we're the leader now, we're gonna be the leader in the future as long as we demand our leadership from ourselves. I hope that helps. You know if you need me, you pick up the phone and give me a call. Uh, Jim Hodges, Jim Hodges Dog Training, 336-945-3232, jimhodgesdogtraining.com uh, on my website. Thank you so much and God bless you.